So I'm going to do a watercolor of this photo of fall in North Tahoe. And I'm going to um, show you how to do this. And uh, this is the Fabriano watercolor paper that I use. Really good brand, um, not expensive. Um, you have to make sure that when you do buy watercolor paper, it's at least 140 pounds. Anything less than that is just too flimsy. And then what you're gonna notice is that I have actually used um, this uh, painter's tape, blue painter's tape, um, to tape down the edges, and that keeps it from buckling and gives the painting a, a nice edge if you want it. But minimally make it, make sure that it's not buckling. So um, I'm gonna use these um, brushes here so, you know, brush is a very personal thing. I like to do a big flat brush and, you know, some a few different brushes, but mostly I'll use the flat brush and the round brush. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little, you know, the, the sort of outlines of what I see, just the main outlines at the background, nothing major. I'm going to just do a little sketch of that for you, show you how I do that. And um, for that, I use uh, watercolor pencils, actually, they're the best, because if you use um, regular pencil, it's very hard to erase. So I prefer using watercolor pencils. Again, different artists do different things. So, and I'll use a pencil that's kind of the same, and I work out where things come. So you can see, you know, that's where the, the um, uh, you know, the back of the lake is coming. So I'm gonna draw that line. So I've speeded this up a bit so that you know, we're not there forever. But you can see that I'm using different pencils, colors to draw in the various shapes of the trees, the tree line, the background, and so on and so forth, and just get my main outlines. Now, take your time over this. I've speeded it up. But honestly, I actually take quite a bit of time with this. You want to get it right. So take your time. And so now what we're going to do go into is the next step, which is actually what we call wet on wet. So I'm gonna use a big brush. I'm gonna get some watercolor, just plain white, you know, and I'm gonna just put wet all over. I'm gonna start with the sky and I'll just put wet, like water, just all the way down on there. And when I do this, then um, I like to just drop the color into the, um, you know, just drop color in. It's just a sort of an undergrowth, so I'm just gonna speed it up so you can see it. I'm, I'm mixing two, two colors of blue. I just don't use one blue, a couple of colors, and I just drop it in, and I sort of let it do its thing, to be honest with you. Um, you know, pretty, it's, pre, it's very, um, yeah, so the background, you know, the down here, like the, just where I see the blue. So I've got some blues, as I say, different, a couple of different blues, like a, you know, cobalt blue, and um, you know a more pinky blue, like an aquamarine. Sorry, an ultramarine. And then I'm going to take out. You see some of this. I can take it off. I put too much on there. So wet brush, just lift it off. There we go. So you can just lift it off with a wet brush, really fast. And um, this is all a big undercoat. So now I'm going to just very roughly, you know, put in some of my cloud formations just very lightly and just you know just this kind of ready background that I've got I want to make it fairly red a lot of water on there wipe it out a little bit there we go too much too much so here comes my just kind of take it up so now yeah that's a great like use your use your um paper to do that and this is just the background it's nothing serious so now I'm going to put some color in the front, just light. This is an undercoat and it's all done pretty much wet on wet. So, you know, it's a lot of just throwing it on, just make the paper wet to start with, not too wet, but wet enough that when you put your, and you can practice on this, you can have a bit of practice paper beside you um, to make sure that, you know, you've got the right colors, that, that you, you know, practice ahead of time and I'm just cleaning it up, drying it off a little bit, you know, with. 
So now I'm like starting to put in the back hills a little bit, paint them in a bit nicer, you know, add a little bit more color to the back hills. And again, I'm going to use a slightly more pinky blue because that makes it go into the background a little bit more. So I'm going to make them a little bit pinky blue, like the more sort of purpley it goes, the further it'll recede on the painting, no matter what you see on the photo. Like, you know, you can just use that as a good datum. And notice how I've left some white um, at the bottom of the sky. So where the sky meets the land, you'll always have some white and that sort of accents it. So now I'm gonna do a little bit more of a precise painting of the clouds. And I'm gonna show you, I'll, I will be speeding this up, but I wanna show you to start with how I do this. So I've kind of used a little bit of a sort of a gray, pinky blue um, for these clouds formations here. Just drawing, painting it in very gently. And you know, you wanna take your time over this, um, you know, this is me painting in real time, but um, I'm gonna speed it up in a bit because I don't want you to be so bored, but like you can see, I'm just putting a little bit of, little bit of pinky color into my blue. And there we go. So, and I'm rolling my brush around. You see, I'm sort of rolling it around and this is gonna go faster. And you can see I'm rolling my hand, rolling the brush around in my hand. It's a really great technique for kind of giving the, the rather kind of, um, you know, unusual shapes of these clouds. A lot of it, and notice also that I always hold my brush at least halfway down. I'm now gonna add a bit more color into the top with my big thicker brush and a lot of, a lot of water on it so that it doesn't, you have to put quite a bit of water on your brush at this point just brushing it in, adding a bit more color as I go along. You really want to make sure that when you're doing watercolor that you do it, you do it thoughtfully. Um, you know, you just, you have to do it thoughtfully. You have to take your time, but at the same time, you have to let the water do its job. Like you have to let it drift into each other, not be so controlling that you can't let it just do the beautiful things that watercolor does when you sort of, you know, bleeds into one part, bleeds into another. So uh, I'm not, you know, so concerned with making it perfectly. I'm not trying to fit to my photograph or copy it exactly. The photograph is more my inspiration. That's how I look at it. It's, you know, it's what inspired me. Um, you know, my, we ha my, my son has a property up there, so I love to go up there and, you know, it's so beautiful. Tahoe is so gorgeous, so. And now I'm starting on adding in the tree line. So I'm starting with the darker tree. And you might think that this is green. In fact, it's really not. It's, um, I've mixed some of the blue with the yellow and I've even put some dark red in there. So I, I don't really use a lot of green in this, um, you know, because yellow, I, I, a lot of stuff in, you know, we're, we're going into fall, but this is like a, you know, one of the trees that hasn't turned and um, still that dark color of the trees up there. And there is some dark and you need some dark um, in the painting to kind of break it up a little bit. You know, you don't want it all to be orange and, you know, you want it to have some darks and some lights. So I'm putting in the, you know, a few little darks here and I'm sort of like thinking about some trees going behind, thinking about some of the, you know. Different things that I'm seeing in the photograph, but also thinking about it and adding bits of dark here and there. And I'm just, you know, I usually will work with a single color. And now I'm going into my beautiful oranges and reds and yellows and just adding them in for all of the colors. Do 
don't be overly careful with this. Now notice that the main way in which I use my brush and my strokes, it's mainly like, um, it's almost like a cross hatch, it's almost like hatching with your brush, it's almost like drawing. Um, and now I'm going, this is actually pretty much a pure purple, but it's because it's, it's pure purple on my brush, but it interacts and mixes with the yellows and the oranges and it almost looks like a gray. In actual fact, it's pretty much pure purple. Or violet, rather. So, yeah, violet. Yeah, see, that's a violet color there. And this is the brushwork, the brush in front. And now I'm going to just kind of make sure that the dark, there's a darkness that is, you know, goes from the tree line to the um, parched, you know, thing. So the, between the tree and that, I just want to make sure there's a nice little bit of darkness there. And now I'm going to add more color. You can see I sometimes will just throw color on, like I just dab it on, just spot it on, and it, I don't know, it just makes it a little bit more interesting sometimes. Again, I'm coming in with some more dark at the tree line where the tree line meets the meadow. Again, a bit more blue, and you, you know, I just felt like adding more blue at this point to give it a bit more definition doesn't get too, you know, I want to make it a little bit brighter at the top. Uh, here I'm going to do some more in the field here. So, um, you know, with this video you can sort of watch it bit by bit, you can do your own. Um, can give you the idea of how to approach doing a you know a watercolor landscape. Um, I'm you know I don't profess to be some expert on watercolor, but I've been doing them since I was about five. So I love you know watercolor is great. The biggest thing that I really do recommend to my students is you know please go bit by bit. Just see the more the further. You, you know, with watercolor, you can't really go back. You know, it's not like acrylic or oil paint. So you've got to get used to this idea of blending um, and layering, layering your, your paint on. Putting a bit more oomph into those clouds there. And you see, I'm actually getting a bit braver. You can get a little bit braver as you go along. I would be, now I'm adding some, you know, much um, more crimson into the trees. I feel, it, you know, it was getting a bit insipid. And the, the photograph itself is a bit insipid. I don't know, it like lacks something. So I just want my painting to be a bit more um, pizzazzy. So I'm putting a little bit more color into it. And I love to mix um, the red or the crimson on top of the green. It's really, it works very nice. So coming towards the end, I'm just finishing off. And, and you know, after even after the video here, I have to admit that I went in and did more to it. But, um, you know, this is giving you the general gist of how to go about it. Making the background even darker here kind of helps with um, the distance, you see. And there you have it. Bit of cleanup there.
Now I, I'm undoing this, and I very you have to be very careful. You have to sort of take it back on itself. So you have to tear it back on itself. You see, and don't care about the fact that it's taking off the um, um, a bit of the um, cardboard that it's stuck to, but it is leaving nice clean lines. on the painting itself and there you have it and there is the final painting and thanks for so thanks so much for joining us here you can see my final painting and I do so much hope that you come back and you know do more classes with us